On today's episode, it's all about manufacturing, live from the Rapid TCT Additive Manufacturing Show in Chicago. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. Bob, before COVID, um, five years ago, a decade ago, uh, the mass media painted an image of manufacturing in America as a dying industry. It's a dying sector, basically. Everything's going offshore. The Chinese are going to eat our lunch. You know, the, the stories are over and over again now. Now, now COVID hit. And post-COVID, we're looking at an exactly opposite world. I travel through Eastern Michigan. I see help wanted signs everywhere. Bounties looking for workers. I see an interest in, in manufacturing like I've never seen before. Are we looking now at the beginning of a new renaissance in manufacturing in America? Indeed, we are. Manufacturing is back. Manufacturing is back in the United States post-COVID from reshoring activities, supply chain activities, but also development of next generation technologies, creating this pent up enthusiasm for manufacturing produced locally with high technology in clean, well-lit, safe factories. Now we're here at, in Chicago at Rapid TCT uh, 23, uh, additive manufacturing in particular, a more advanced sort of a very sexy way of manufacturing. And I, what I'm seeing around here is something I haven't seen in a long time, young people, uh, extreme interest in young people. Just think about this technology in particular, do you think that sort of will draw them into manufacturing? Oh, 100%. I mean, some of these folks got their first additive manufacturing machine when they were 15 or 16 years old. They learned the fundamentals of printing 3D basic technology. And as they evolved through high school, through secondary education, they realized just how much this technology can do. It's the art of the possible that I say is only limited by our ability to conceptualize it and imagine it. So yeah, I, I absolutely do. And I would agree with you, the demographic in a show like this is very different than what I would call a more traditional manufacturing show. Uh, traditionally, the thought of manufacturing is dark, dirty, the classic sort of mill. In fact, it must be to even use film clips from the 60s or, or 50s to show, show manufacturing as it once was. Uh, I turn manufacturing plants now essentially and they look like hospitals, bright, clean, airy. Is, is, is there an image issue here that, that we need to modernize or update the image of manufacturing in America? As an industry, we need to address that. And, and we are in any way that we can to create an image of manufacturing, which is more aligned with what factories look like today. As you've said, they're clean, they're well lit, they're safe. I would argue some of our factories are cleaner than your family room. People need to understand it's a great paying job. It's, it's, it's clean, it's safe, and a great opportunity to be at. And there are many, many initiatives underway to change the image of manufacturing for the general population, as well as younger people who'd wanna come and be a part of manufacturing. Automation is a major part of modern manufacturing now. Uh, many people fear automation. They're concerned about the disruptive effect of automation. We've heard that before. Uh, uh, what's the stance on automation? Ironically, automation can actually help create more jobs because it, it takes the rudimentary yes. part of the job out of the equation. And it allows the more creative, technologically advanced, and frankly, more interesting jobs to be open and available for workers themselves to do and participate in and to be a part of it actually increases the capacity of a factory and can in fact create more jobs. And the value of those jobs, um, uh, we're looking at entry level jobs, mid-level, high salary jobs. Well, what is sort of the profile of manufacturing jobs going forward, do you think? All of the above. Many manufacturers today classify them as level one, two, three, or four based on the level of technical capability of the worker and also the level of cap capable needs of the job. But these jobs pay well more than what I would call traditional fast food jobs. They come with benefits, retirement, 401k, healthcare, and it's a way to build a career, not just a short-term job. Right now, I have a coding culture for youth in many cases. They're, they're, they're interacting with their smartphones, their handheld device, they're thinking about programming, coding there. Is there a connection between those coding skills and the skills needed by modern manufacturers? Very few of the machines you'd even see on the factory floor here do not have an, a, a computer interface that requires a level of coding and industrialization. You may have heard of Industry 4.0, digital factory floor, connectivity of the equipment that is on the factory floor. That all requires coding. So absolutely, and we need more coders to come into manufacturing to help support the digitalization of the factory floor. 10 or 20 years from now, if we were going to have this conversation again, what do you think we would be talking about? I think we would be looking back saying it was the start of the second industrial revolution in the United States for manufacturing, the rebirth, the excitement, the thrill of producing locally, producing high technology and creating great paying safe jobs for people. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by engineering.com. 
For our deeper engineering series, visit engineering.com TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future, Designing the Future, and the Engineering Roundtable, not found on our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.